I don't know if I'm going to, like, I don't know what I'm going to do with them. If, if, if volume three doesn't do what I want it to, I might stop buying them. Oh, the milk chocolate? Yeah. Stop. Put it back. Why? Just put oh. it back. For no reason. This is stressing me out. I have to fix it. Oh my god. What? Oh, the, the, the fact that I just like threw shit in without really thinking about it. Something's gonna bend. I know it. <laughs> I hate you. I know. I'm literally the
Hello everyone, I am Sammy, your devoted manga otaku, and welcome to my manga space. I hope everyone enjoyed my little shopping vlog. I don't usually get to shop in bookstores, so it was a treat to browse all the different manga titles and covers. Today I will be hauling all the manga I bought at bookstores while on vacation, manga I've received as gifts, and manga I've unboxed off screen. Basically, I'm hauling everything that isn't packaged or boxed up. Now, if you're someone who loves to watch unboxings, I plan on releasing another haul soon, and that'll include an unboxing segment, so stay tuned for that. But for now, I invite you to grab a tea or other beverage of your choice, and let's haul manga! The first manga I'm going to haul today is volume 10 of the Viz Media publication, Dragon Ball The 3 in 1 Editions by Akira Toriyama. I ended up unboxing this volume early because my husband has been reading this series and he didn't want to wait for me to film an unboxing video, which is totally understandable. I am a hoarder of unopened manga packages. <laughs> If you've been following my channel, you know it's been an ongoing battle trying to find these 3-in-1 editions, so I'm very grateful that we have the whole set now. I love how the spines create a picture, and it looks really awesome on our bookshelf. Now the question is, do we start collecting super, or do we wait for a box set? Decisions, decisions. <laughs> Up next, I'm going to haul the manga I purchased while on vacation with my family, way back in July. I mentioned the first couple volumes briefly on my Instagram, and that's volumes 1 and 2 of We Swore to Meet in the Next Life and That's When Things Got Weird by Hato Hachia. Published by Seven Seas Entertainment, this Jose rom-com is an age gap series with a twist. This manga follows Princess Yuko and her knight Harold. They've fallen madly in love, but unfortunately, it's impossible for the two to be together. So they swear they will find each other in the next life. Reborn in the modern world, Yuko has spent the last 40 years searching for Harold, and just when she starts losing hope, she finds him. Now that the couple is reunited, they realize they have come against a new obstacle. They were born 22 years apart. I'm pretty excited for this series for multiple reasons. It's a Jose, it's a short series, and it's a re reincarnation age gap love story. The cover art for these books is beautiful. I love the flowers and the colors, and I think the characters look adorable. The last volume comes out this month. I've pre-ordered it and plan on binging the series once it's here. The last couple volumes I bought were volumes 2 and 3 of the Yuri series How Do We Relationship by Tammy Full. I decided to buy the rest of the series because mainly Manga spoke so highly of this on his Instagram. This Viz Media series is a slice of life story about two women in college who decide to start dating because they're both gay and it's convenient. One of them is experienced when it comes to dating while the other is inexperienced, and together they're trying to figure out how to relationship. I recently read these volumes, and I'm not going to say too much because I'll be sharing my thoughts in September's wrap up, but what I will say is that this reminded me a little bit of Sweat and Soap. I really like the artwork, it's nice to look at, and the character designs are fairly different from other manga I've read. It's rated 16 plus and is slightly spicy, love that. <laughs> I've already pre-ordered volume 4 and I can't wait to continue this series. 
Also, I love how on the back of the books, the characters are holding hands in different ways. And I just think it's really, really sweet. <laughs> I'm going to skim over these next few manga because I read them in August and talked about them quite a bit in my August wrap up video. If you want to hear what I thought of these volumes, I'll link the video on the screen and in the description so you can check it out. The first couple manga I'm hauling are volumes 1 and 2 of the Viz Media Collector's Editions of Mermaid Saga by Rumiko Takahashi. This shonen horror is about a boy who unwittingly eats mermaid flesh and becomes immortal. These volumes follow his adventures to find a mermaid and reverse his immortality. These editions are gorgeous, and they're rated 17 plus due to some gory moments and boops. <laughs> I really want to start collecting Mason Ikoku by Takahashi Sensei, but they're on the pricier side. I think one volume is $35 Canadian. This series has an abrupt ending in my opinion, but if that's something that doesn't bother you and you love horror and mermaids and monsters, you should check this out. Next up is the Jose title Helter Skelter Fashion Unfriendly by Kayako Okazaki. This psychological horror is a very grim and twisted tale of a model who plummets into madness while striving to be the most beautiful and relevant celebrity in Japan. This vertical comic publication earns its mature rating with its adult subject matter and explicit illustrations. This manga was a little rough around the edges when it came to the writing, but if you like manga with dark themes, you'll probably really enjoy this. And then we have volume 3 of the shoujo series, A Sign of Affection by Sue Morishita. This is a romance story between two college students. One is deaf and the other is learning sign language to better communicate with the main character. A romance starts to blossom as these two characters learn more about each other. I was surprised to hear that some people don't care for the covers of this series. I love the covers of this series. I think the art is beautiful inside and out. I'm really excited to see what's in store for this couple as this series is really amazing. Up next is the sublime publication Dick Fight Island by Rayban Ike. If you like Yaoi, then you need this in your life. This is out of stock everywhere, so I feel really fortunate that I'm able to haul this. It's about a society comprised of eight clans, and every four years, each clan selects a male champion to represent them in a battle of endurance. Whoever comes last <laughs> is declared the winner and earns the title of king. This manga exceeded all my expectations. It's erotic, action-packed, romantic, and funny. I love the character designs and the art. This is a really great yaoi. <laughs> The last few manga I read in August but haven't hauled yet are volumes 2 through 6 of the psychological horror Blood on the Tracks by Shuzo Oshimi. Volume 1 is still 
boxed up with some other manga in my room so I will be hauling the first volume in my next manga haul. This vertical publication follows a mother and her son and some scary stuff happens. <laughs> The art in this is bone chilling. It's full of darkness and texture. I love how the covers showcase a seemingly normal relationship between this mother and her son, but when you read the contents, you're bombarded with anything but normal. <laughs> This next manga is a sequel to a series I read earlier this year, and that's volume 1 and 2 of my solo exchange diary by Nagata Kabi. Essentially, this autobiographical manga chronicles Kabi Sensei's experiences after the successful release of her award-winning manga, My Lesbian Experience with Loneliness. Now that manga was very deep and thought-provoking, and I'm eager to read this in the next couple months. Before moving on, I want to point out how damaged this volume is. I never have high hopes when it comes to Amazon's treatment of books, but wow, this is ridiculous. The cover is actually bent. There's like a crease on the cover, and I don't know if you can see, but on the back of the manga, there's like impressions in the book. It almost looks like somebody was like jabbing it with like the back of a pen or something. Yeah. Not great. <laughs> Now, I was planning on reading this next book for the Spooky Smart Bitch Readathon, but I just couldn't get to it in time, and that's the horror comedy Johnny the Homicidal Maniac by Honan Vasquez. This graphic novel follows the adventures of Johnny, a young guy living with a pair of styrofoam doughboys that encourage his madness and a wall that constantly needs a fresh coat of blood. This book contains all seven issues in the series, and I look forward to reading this perfectly horror, horrid and gory book this October. The next few volumes I'm hauling are all manga I bought at bookstores while visiting my BFF last month. If you liked my intro video, you should check out her vlog video on her channel of us shopping together. It's very therapeutic and ASMR, the complete opposite of my video. I'll link it on screen and in the description below if you're interested. The first book I'm hauling is a full color graphic novel, and that's The Prince and the Dressmaker by Jen Wang. I've had my eye on this book for a long time, and when I saw it at Chapters, I took it as a sign and bought it. This story is fairly basic. It follows a prince who likes to take on a secret persona, the Lady Crystallia. 
He enjoys the nightlife with his seamstress, Francis, who makes his daring dresses envied by the Paris fashion world. I bought this because I wanted to read it to my kids. I thought it would prompt some really important conversations about being yourself and wearing whatever you want. I finished reading this story to them earlier this month and wow, this book was marvelous. The art is gorgeous and the storyline is adorable. I can't wait to talk about this more and share the impact it had on my kiddos. Up next, we have volumes 1 and 2 of the Seinen series, Zom 100, Bucket List of the Dead, story by Hero Aso? Aso? And art by Kotaro Takata. Takata. Sorry if I mispronounced anything. <laughs> this horror-filled comedic adventure follows Akira, a young guy who's been slaving away at the same dreary job for years. However, Akira is able to escape his dull life through the most unexpected way, the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> now free to do what he pleases, Akira decides to scratch all 100 items off his bucket list. I bought these volumes because there's a lot of hype around this Viz Media publication, and I'm a sheep who just wants to be a part of the conversation. <laughs> It's rated 16 plus, the zombies are pretty scary looking, and there's some gory scenes as well. I love the cover art for these volumes, I love the neon colors, and the overall energy of the characters. I already ordered volume 3. I was in shock when I found these next books at the bookstore because I've been waiting months for these earlier volumes to come back in stock, and that's volumes 2 and 3 of the Shonen series, The Girl from the Other Side, Shula Rune by Nagabi. The Seven Seas Entertainment fairy tale takes place in a world with two kingdoms. The outside, where cursed beasts roam, and the inside, where the humans live peacefully. A young human girl named Shiva lives on the outside with a demon, whom she calls Teacher. But one night, Shiva leaves Teacher's care, revealing the secret behind her mysterious living arrangements. Now, I read the first volume of this years ago, and from what I remember, it's very mysterious, and the art balances the gloomy and sweet moments perfectly. This series is on my 2021 wish list, and I really want to collect the rest before the end of 2021. This next manga is one that I probably should have researched a little more before buying, and that's the Sane in Romance, Shiori's Diary by Suya Suya. This mature romance is published by Seven Seas Entertainment and follows a 35-year-old woman who, be who comes across her husband's journal and discovers that he's been having affairs. In retaliation, Shiori decides to write in her own diary and chronicle her own new erotic adventures. I haven't read this yet, so I can't say for sure what I think, but after flipping through this, I've decided that I'm not a huge fan of the art style. Plus, it's basically softcore hentai. I'm very picky when it comes to manga with nudity. I like the characters to be drawn realistically. And from what I've seen, I don't really like how the characters and the sex scenes are drawn in this. But with all that said, I'm still going to read this. <laughs> Who knows, it might have a really good story attached to it. And I'm not opposed to trying new things. This next manga I'm hauling are volumes 1 and 2 of Yakuza Lover by Nozomi, no, Nozomi? 
Mino. Published by Viz Media, the narrative follows a feisty college student who falls in love with a Yakuza boss. I recently read volume one, and it's basically Jose Smut, but like good Jose Smut. It's trashy, steamy, romantic, and beautifully drawn. The eyes are so sparkly and expressive. The first volume was a pretty quick read, and now that the characters have been introduced, I'm really excited to learn more about the plot. Published by Yen Press, Volume 3 of Mint Chocolate by Mami Orcasa is the newest installment of the Mint Chocolate series. This shoujo series is about a romance between step-siblings. I recently read this volume and it's reignited my love for this series. I'm so happy with the direction. I feel like the art gets better with every volume and I really love how the covers showcase pastel colors and chocolates. If you like taboo romances, you might want to give this one a shot. I first became interested in this next series after watching Mommy Weeb talk about it in her Volume 1 Blitz manga video, and that's the Seinen series which had Hatelier by Kamomi? Kamomi? Shira... Shirahama. I probably butchered that, my apologies. I don't usually like innocent fantasy manga, but I bought volumes 1 and 2 because I wanted to try this series out, see if I like it, and see what all the hype is about. This beautifully illustrated series follows a young girl who yearns to harness magic. But magic casters are born, not made, and she wasn't born a witch. However, when watching a mysterious traveling magician perform magic, she realizes her dreams of becoming a witch could come true after all. I've seen reviews describing this Kodansha publication as being a cross between Studio Ghibli and Harry Potter, and that makes me extremely curious. I am very eager to try this series out. <laughs> These last few volumes are all manga I unwrapped in a manga swap with Joraline Reads. If you haven't watched us swap manga, I recommend you check out both our videos. It's our first collaboration and we had so much fun unwrapping presents. The first manga she so kindly gifted me is volume 1 of the Seinen series Blue Period by Tsubasa Yamaguchi. Honestly, I have no idea what this is about. If I had to guess? It's about students pursuing art? Maybe? <laughs> I think I'm going to go into this one blind. It's insanely popular with the manga community. I've seen a lot of reviewers celebrate this series. I think the art style is pretty and I love how the characters are using the manga cover as a canvas on all the different volumes. It's rated 16 plus, so that makes me wonder why this school life drama earn such a rating? Is it dark? Is it sexy? I have no clue, but I plan on buying the second volume soon and giving this series a good honest shot.
gift I received from Jordaline is the horror comedy Sadako-san and Sadako-chan story by Noriaki Sugihara and Koji Suzuki with art by Aya Susumi. I haven't looked into this too much, but I think it's about Sadako and she's the girl from the horror film The Ring, and this is about her becoming a YouTuber. I flipped through this a little bit and found the art really cute and heartwarming. This seems like a super sweet, super short one-shot, and I'm probably going to read this at Halloween time. After months of searching and waiting, I finally have the first volume of Blue Flag by Kato, all thanks to my bestie. This shonen manga is insanely popular. I've heard mixed reviews on the ending, but nevertheless, I want to collect the series and draw my own conclusions. I know it's about a love quadrangle between the three characters on the cover, but other than that, I know very little about this. I think I'm going to keep myself in the dark for this series as well, and just enjoy the ride. Now, I just have to find the rest of the series, which is out of stock, everywhere. So, yay! <laughs> The last manga I'm hauling in this video is volume 1 of the Seinen series My Dress Up Darling by Shinichi Fukuda. Published by Square Enix, this spicy rom-com follows a boy named Wakana, a loner who spends most of his time in the home ec room at school, sewing and crafting dolls. One day after school, a popular and trendy girl named Marin finds him sewing and ropes him into helping her make clothes for her secret hobby cosplay. <laughs> this series sounds amazing. I love the premise and the art is gorgeous. It's rated 17 plus because there's a lot of boobs apparently and that's that's a-okay with me. Love that. <laughs> I recently purchased the second volume through Right Stuff so I'll probably wait to read this but I'm confident I'm going to love this series. And that, friends, is the end of my September manga haul video. I'm sure some of you have read some of these manga before. I'd love to know which ones you've read and what you thought of them. If you're interested in watching more videos from me, you can check out my end card where I'll have links to my most recent videos. I hope you all have a magnificent day, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!